Hello, you paddleboard people that want to have a looper switcher. Not a looper that goes... We're talking about a thing that has lots of loops that you can choose from and also save. Now, Carl Martin, I've been working with for a long, long time, uh, which is also why this video is product provided, but not paid for. Technically, the same thing. This can be considered payment. So that's why it says in the corner, you know, paid video. So uh, I've looked at the Car Martin Octa Switch Mark II, which was a big ass thing. Then I looked at the Mark III, uh, which was half bi as big, but deeper and then still big. And now there's one that's more smaller, bro, but it's still pretty damn big because look at the width of it. Now this will fit on a 60 centimeter board, but it will occupy the whole lower row of the board. Let's talk a couple of features, which I will then repeat as I show them on a board. Now, um, this has eight loops and it has eight presets only. There's no menus. What you see is what you get. That's the benefit of the Carl Martin switches. There's no hidden features anywhere. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You click them and you will have presets saved on them. I'll show you how to do that very easy. Um, in the past, each preset was done with dip switches, which means you couldn't quickly change them and there wasn't a mode where all of a sudden in a rehearsal you could just play it like a pedal board. That changed. Um, if you hit instant access, uh, wherever you are, it'll just make you uh, able to hit any of the eight preset buttons as a loop. And then you can just say, I want loop six in, loop six out. And you can bring those loops in and out, but it won't be saved unless you hit the save button. Very easy. There's a bypass and mute switch. On the back, you can say whether that's bypass or mute. So you can actually bypass or mute it. Um, there's a buffer on and off for the input. You have eight loops. And everyone always asked, Oh, but can you do the four cable method? Can you do the four cable method? Now it's very clear. Yes, you can. Because right there, let's do this over here. Loop number six, seven, and eight are in a little box. And there's an extra input and an extra send. So the way this, this will work, well, you know what? I'm actually going to explain it later. You can see. It's rather simple. I'm not doing that in my demo, but you can do five loops in front of the amp and three loops in the effects loop of the amp if you so choose. So four cable method works. Loop number eight, which is kind of hidden, is stereo. And it's only kind of labeled right there, where it says L right, L -L -L LR. So these two uh, jacks are actually um, TSR jacks. So if you use an insert cable with TSR to uh, two mono plugs, you can run loop number eight as a stereo loop. Pretty cool. It also has MIDI, sending out on MIDI channel 1, that can't be changed, and sending out program change 1 through 8 on each preset. It's simple, but it does the trick, and I'll show you that. Then there are four switches, so you could switch reverb on your amp, and channel, and the other channel, and then who knows what. Four different switching functions. You could switch pedals with switching functions and so on and so on. And that is done with dip switches, pretty much saying, let's say on preset one, I want uh, switch four to be active. What you do is um, you pull down one, and now only on preset one, number four is active. So you say whatever is down is on or off. I mean, it depends on what on and off state it is. It doesn't matter. It's the other, the other way. So, um, and then it's got two outputs. And again, with dip switches, you can say, per one of the eight presets, which output you're using. Are you using both? Are you using one of them? So you could go to both amps all the time. You could go to one amp with one preset, the other amp with another one, and so on. You could do uh, preset number eight to go to your looper. Uh, no, not to your looper. <sighs> you could do preset number eight to go to your tuner, um, for example. And then it goes out to the tuner. It's an option. Um, very well built. It is on the bigger side. Does it have to be this big? I don't know. I think other companies manage to make them smaller. But it is super well built. It is very intuitive. 
The MIDI is a great addition. The four switches is quite a bit. It's probably more than I would need. Two outputs is cool. It's definitely a looper switcher with a little bit more features. Now, let's go into me expanding things and actually, uh, yeah, the wall, there we go. Let's do that. So let's take a quick look at how this works. Um, we got nine pedals here, but we only have eight loops. I'll explain. Loop number one. Uh, how do I do this? Instant access, here we go. Gonna turn these off and I'll show you. Loop number one is the bell. Very simple, in, out. Loop number two is the fat B. Three is the blues driver. Four is actually the killer V and then the surreal in series. So they're both in loop number four. Loop number five is the fan V delay. Loop number six is the DD200 from Boss. Seven is the R1 from Walrus Audio. And eight is that big ass Chase Bliss reverb. That could actually be stereo because what you don't see on the back is it says left, right. So these could be TRS cables and with TRS cables or insert cables as they're also called, um, stereo, uh, like a TRS here and then two here, you could actually go have loop number eight stereo. And obviously input and send means that six, seven or eight could be run with a four cable method. So you go in here, have your five loops for drives and then go into your amp out, but then have these in the effects loop of your amp by going input from the amp send and send to the amp's return. That already sounded really complicated. Then uh, we have the four uh, switches. We're going to go and uh, switch an amp with that. Um, two different outputs, which you can define with the dip switches, uh, which I have done. And we have a bypass right there. So if I don't have instant access, I actually have presets. So how do I change a preset? That's fairly simple. Let's say I want to add loop number three, subtract loop number two. I go to instant access and now I can just do this in, like a normal pedal board. I can turn them on and off. See? So we're going to turn loop number two off, turn loop number three on, done. If I now go instant access gone, it goes back to the preset the way it was. So we're going to do this again, turn two off, turn three on and we hit store and it's done. Now, instant access is off and my loop is saved. So because I don't want that, I'm gonna go make that reverse and done. That's actually how, how easy that is. Now, let's look at seven and eight. On seven and eight, I actually have output number two. So I could go, hello. Um, so I could, people want something from me. I could go to my clean app, stop it. Freaking Andy Ferris. Um, so, Number one would be able to go into my clean amp, for example. And number two could go into my dirt amp, which actually I'm also, as you can see, I'm switching the channel on right here between these two. Um, so I could go into two different amps uh, very easily. And that is simply done by having the dip switches, one, two, three, four, five, six, up on output one and then down on uh, uh, for, for seven and eight and the reversed here. I could of course have both outputs on, on seven if I want that, only one on eight, one on six. It's very easily done. And that is very clearly something you're not switching every freaking day. That's a basic preset. But of course, your pedal or uh, your pedal um, on off status, you're switching rather uh, often. Okay, MIDI is sending a program change. I haven't wired that up yet, but I will. Um, is sending program changes one two three four five six seven eight out on I would assume MIDI channel one. It doesn't say that anywhere. Would be nice. I don't think you can change the MIDI channel, but we're going to try to switch some presets right here. And obviously, you can't on five. It's going to send program change number five, which means you would have to program on number five the thing that you want and then save it to number five. That's the way that uh, the gig rig also did it. At least the original gig rig. Good. So um. I already prepared some sound and I'm uh, showing you how uh, how clean it is uh, for another video and I'm going to throw that in right now. So let's hear some sounds. Let's see switching around. You don't hear clicks, you don't hear pops. And um, yeah, let's let's get some, some audio happening.
So everything I just, you know, had explained, I explained again. That's what you get. Twice better than none. I don't know. Um, let's look at a switching function and that working. So now I wired up the um, small box from Friedman into extension 3. It's actually not a TRS cable because it's a simple switching function. And you can see, and you can maybe even hear the uh, hiss already. So on 7, I've got the reverb on into the cleaner channel of the small box. And on 8, I got the drive channel with the fat B in front of it. And it's going out of output 2. And we will listen now. First mute it. And that works. Let's do MIDI. I mean, very easy. So MIDI, super simple. I hooked up the octa switch, the strip, with MIDI out to the CXM9078, which of course would have a through. The octa switch is defaulting to MIDI channel one. You can't change that. And program changes one through eight. I had to change this to receive MIDI channel one by holding down both switches, and then it responded to the first MIDI uh, signal that came in. But now you can see if I go to one, it goes to the first possible preset, which in this case is zero, and so on. So you can't change that two is one, that's just the way it is, but it's sending eight different MIDI uh, information, this is, uh, program changes uh, that's on in this case. If I wanted to change anything, I would literally have to go change this stuff around, then save it, and now it would be saved to that. Pretty damn simple, eight programs. It program changes, MIDI works, done. There you go. Now, I can't tell you how much this is yet because it's as of yet, uh, I think not on the market. I don't see it anywhere. I have a hunch that it is priced a little bit higher than I would want it to be. Looking at the original Octa switches, um, they are just all a little bit, a little bit more than I would say, ah, this is, this, yeah, because there's, of course, um, versions from China. There's, of course, stuff that's m more highly priced, um, like the Boss ES8, which, is, uh, of course, has a tons more features, um, or the Gig Rig switches, which are even more priced, but, again, more features. Now, um, if this is 350 bucks, I'd say I'd love it to be 299 or 249 But then who am I to say? Because uh, this is Karl Martin. It is made in China, but it's still Karl Martin, and the quality is very, very high. So who am I to say that it's too expensive? Just a feeling. That doesn't mean anything. Also, it's red. Come on, it's the only switcher that's red. And it's Carl Martin. And in terms of ease of use, just beat. And I love the company. So I'll put links below. I thank Leslie for switching, which I think she did twice in this video. And um, yeah, we'll put animals at the end. You guys are, have been awesome. Bye-bye. It's times like these that show us what we're all about. And will you please be strong enough to sit this out? I'll see you on the other side. This kiss is a rainbow's forever one. The time will come, but not tonight. It's why we have to stay six feet apart We're gonna come together We hold all the cards We only have to play them right So do your part And everything will be alright It might be hard